Vikings Valhalla dropped earlier this year to much fanfare. The story chronicled the Viking invasion of England following the events of St. Bryce's Day, when Danes up and down the country were massacred by King Æthelred the Unready. And it has since been announced that Netflix have ordered a second season of the hit show. Today we're discussing story details for the second season, plus everything else we know about it. Stay with us. First up, what was the first season all about? As we mentioned, the story follows King Canute and his invasion of England after the St. Bryce's Day massacre, in which Danish Vikings were slaughtered by the sitting King Æthelred in response to continued raids in English territory. Canute is joined on his raid by Leif Erikson, who traveled to Denmark to assist his sister, Freydis, in her quest to find and kill the men who assaulted her. Brothers Harald Sigurdsson and Olaf Haraldsson are also along for the ride. But once the job is done in England, Olaf travels back to Scandinavia to organize a coup against King Sven Forkbeard, whilst he is occupied with ruling the island nation, his forces have just invaded. Freydis, who did not go on the mission to England, instead traveled to Uppsala, but was attacked on the way by pagan hunting madmen, who she killed. In response to this, she's hunted down by Jarl Karr. Later, Freydis and Leif do their best at defending Kattegat from Jarl Olaf's forces, but ultimately the settlement falls, with Olaf taking over as leader. But only for a very, very brief time. At the end of the season, we see Forkbeard's forces re-entering Kattegat Bay, and Olaf's forces is running for their lives, leaving the feared leader to face Forkbeard all alone. Did you watch the first season of Vikings Valhalla? Let us know what you thought of this show down below. So, what will the second season be all about? Let's see. The first season ended with Vikings scattered all over the place and various power dynamics rising and falling. And with Jarl Haken gone, as well as Jarl Olaf having fled from Forkbeard's forces, it will be interesting to see who Kattegat's next leader will be, and it is expected this second season will address this from the outset. It's also thought several potential leaders could do battle as the power vacuum of Kattegat's new leader takes center stage. However, we do not think this new leader will be Harold, as he is now on the run from Forkbeard, as he was part of the invading force alongside half-brother Olaf. Joining him on the run is Freydis. After they have rekindled their on-off love affair and the Norwegian prince is now viewed as a pariah in his native land, he is a wanted man, and the second season is sure to address where Harold goes from here. Will he come back stronger, or will he sink off to some other European country to take stock of the situation? We'll have to wait and see. Freydis' story will also develop, and fans should find out more about her status as the last. And we should find out more about how Emma plans to take revenge on Elfgifu, and it's thought Mercia could play a key role in the second season. What would you like to see addressed in the new season? Let us know below. Next up, what do we know about the cast? It is thought that most of the main players from the first season of Vikings Valhalla will be returning for season two, including Sam Corlett, Leif, Leo Suter, Harold, Freda Gustafsson, Freydis, Laura Berlin, Emma of Normandy, David Oakes, Godwin, and Johannes Hakor Johannesson, Olaf. We're also pretty sure that Royal Father and Son Forkbeard and Canute, played by Soren Pilmark and Bradley Freegard, will be returning to address goings-on in Kattegat at the end of the first season. However, we think that Jarl Haken, played by Carolyn and Henderson is probably heading to Valhalla as she met her untimely demise in the season one finale. Unless she appears in flashbacks or something a little more sinister, which Henderson herself referenced when saying, we don't really know that she won't be back. She might turn up as a ghost or something. We're also pretty certain that Jarl Kerr and King Edmund won't be returning as they were both killed off in the first season. As of yet, we don't have any news regarding any new faces, but it is expected a few new characters will be introduced once season two rolls in just to keep things spicy over in Scandinavia. It has been suggested that legendary Viking Eric the Red could appear in the upcoming season to check on the progress of his son and daughter, Leif and Freydis. Who are you most looking forward to seeing once the show returns? When can we expect the second season to drop then? Stay tuned to find out. Well, it would seem as though fans of the popular Viking spinoff won't have long to wait between season one and two, as filming for the second season began before the first season had even aired. And we can also reveal that filming has officially wrapped as of November last year. Jeb Stewart, who serves as series creator, updated us as recently by saying, season two has been filmed, it's in the editing phase now. So whilst we can certainly see the second season two on the horizon, we don't have an exact release date just yet. But if all things continue to go to plan, we can see the show dropping sometime towards the end of this year. And if not the end of this year, 
then early next year at the very latest, which is super exciting for the fans of the hit show. Are you looking forward to Vikings Valhalla Season 2? Surely you are, right? So what other questions do we want answered in Season 2? So, of course we saw Harold and Freitas do a runner at the end of the second season, but everyone's wondering where they're heading off to. In the same breath, we also want to know if Forkbeard will catch up with Olaf and what the outcome will be. We're pretty sure he will be relieved of his head if and when Forkbeard catches up with him. Whilst there are numerous factions vying for control of Kattegat, what we really want to know is how the death of Liv will affect Leaf. It has been suggested that he will slowly morph into his father, the brutal Eric the Red, but we hope not, as he is one of the most caring characters on the show. We also want to know what King Canute will do about his first wife, Elfgifu. After hearing about his taking another wife, she turned rogue and attempted to keep his ships from him. If by the time season 2 rolls around, Forkbeard or Emma haven't already disposed of her, we think she'll be in big trouble once Canute returns to England. And then there's the question of Godwin and his continued betrayals. The Littlefinger-esque character can only keep double-crossing people for so long before he surely loses his head. Am I right? What else would you guys like to see addressed once season 2 drops? Let us know your thoughts below. Leo Sutter has addressed his character of Harold Hardrada. Stay tuned. Harold, played by English actor Leo Sutter, is one of the show's good guys. But whether or not he was like this in real life, we're not so sure. And Sutter has addressed his character in a recent interview explaining that he was famed as this strong, athletic, ferocious warrior. He was kind of a Viking celebrity of his era. Conor McGregor, if you will. Of course, Conor McGregor has come in for criticism recently after one controversy after another, but Sutter seems to believe that the character of Harold is best summed up by looking at McGregor. We're not so sure. He also went on to explain the complicated nature of the relationship between his character as that of the other male lead, Leaf, described it as a yin and yang element. He then compared the two to Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, but historians have doubted if the pair ever even met in real life. He continued, So yeah, there's calmness and quietness to Leaf. In contrast to Harold, he's brash and he sometimes sees red. So what did he know about the character before he auditioned? Well, when asked what he knew about the character before he auditioned for the role, he said, When I told my friends I was Harold Hardrada, English people knew who he is because 1066 is a turning point in English history. They all knew immediately who he was. My discoveries were actually centered on the earlier part of Harold's life, which was quite extraordinary because he was exiled, and he became this mercenary who fought throughout Europe. He traveled to places with books and writing, so people wrote about him and knew about him. Whilst Harold is one of the most famous people from the medieval period, Leo still had to bring his own take on the role, and there is so much we don't and will never know about the man. As always, thanks for stopping by today, and remember to join us next time for some more fun and games. Also, why not like, share, and subscribe to our channel? Bye, guys.